everyone welcome to my youtube channel girl with the scalpel this is dr m i'm here to help you out to fulfill your dream to become a dentist or practice as an internationally trained dentist in the united states of america i know i had been missing from the social circuit from quite some time due to certain personal reasons but now i assure you guys that i am back and will be coming up with many interesting videos and topics that we had been discussing and today again i am here with a very interesting topic or rather i should say a very interesting speciality which all which all my internationally trained friends can actually take up so before we dive into today's video guys do have a look at uh, uh, the playlist which i have already created about uh, how you can practice in various states so i have discussed about each and every state in a lot of detail along with uh, many important links to their board websites you can have a look at them do your own research as well and if you have questions you can ask me in the comment section you can dm me directly in the instagram i know you had been messaging me and there were various comments which i couldn't reply due to certain reasons but slowly i'll you know come back into the game and will solve your queries so again guys do look at the my playlist and uh, if you want to see and look up for a specific state go to the playlist you can check out one more thing i have created the playlist with all the states especially the ones which allow the foreign trained dentist or they give an edge to you or in some way help you out to practice as an internationally trained dentist be it pursuing a dental specialty uh, be it uh, doing uh, certain programs and certain certifications by which you can get yourself licensed into the united states and today i am with another video talking about dental anesthesiology so again this branch i would say not very common in southeast asian countries especially from india and pakistan and bangladesh this is not considered a separate specialty it is more or less or i should say a part of it is covered into your masters program in the southeast asian countries but it is a special or it is a, a specialty or a certificate program which runs in united states of america which is a great thing as now you have your chances even more brighter all you have to do is just take up this course okay so the tougher part is you have to look into and find the states where you can practice as a dental anesthesiologist also if you pursue this program if you are able to manage to get a license in any of the united states you can go and practice in that state and after few years when you have your license you have that confidence you can even expand to other states as well by the method of reciprocity right which is an excellent method and then in few years more of the united states will open up to you and even some of the schools are there who accept certain programs or certain certificates after doing those certificates you can pursue even your dream specialty or even manage to get into a dental school now i would like to elaborate more about this how for example if you take took up this dental specialty in dental anesthesiology you take up the specialty and then for example you start practicing in the state of texas so now you are practicing you are 3 years into your practice now you can apply for the reciprocity and spread your wings and expand your practice in other states right but with this there's an advantage of your change in the status of your visa right how if you might be working as a dental anesthesiologist you would apply for a special status for working which is popularly known as a, a j1 visa and if you're somebody who is from natively from mexico or natively from canada or you an immigrant from canada or from mexico by the rule of nafta you can practice on tn1 visa and after that you can apply for your green card there are many hospitals many organizations who automatically apply for your green card and if you are lucky enough which in most of the cases the doctors are i should say it's totally on my perception again it's not something which i'm studying from the statistics or anything it's just my perception right you might be able to get that green card and then you can apply for 
your uh, DDS or maybe certain specialty which you had been practicing in your home country or you always dreamt of. So it makes a lot easier. It makes your life easier as well as it clears your visa status as well. It might take some time, maybe three years, four years or five years, but you will reach your destination. So again, I think there's a lot of talking which we did. Now let's dive in into today's video. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do comment in the comment section. I will be replying to your comments very shortly. Right? And guys, okay. So let's dive in. Do you want to practice as a specialist in the United States? Of course you want to. That's why you're looking into this video. So where can you pursue this specialty? Now there is a good news and a bad news. The good news is the specialty itself. It's newer, it's relatively newer, I would say, or a concept is newer for somebody who is not from North America. And you have one center which provides you the certification. And there is only one center which provides that, so that's the bad news. Although there are seven to eight schools which provide you certifications, but they don't accept the non-natives either you have to be a Canadian or you have to be a Mexican or you must have done your DDS from your from US or from Canada then only you would be accepted into these courses if you don't have a DDS or you don't have another dental specialty you can't pursue this so why this is also very important because for example in the state of Virginia for example if uh, you thought about uh, doing a uh, uh, I would say uh, a GPR course of one year you did that and you want to practice not in just in Virginia but also in Texas but Texas has a requirement of doing a specialty for two years then what you can do is if you did your GPR you can always come to this school your CV would be even more polished because of that uh, GPR you can apply into the school and post this a certificate you can apply in Texas as well so you, you will get two countries or sorry the two provinces to practice so let's know which school is it which allows you so that is the Illinois Masonic Medical Center so let's talk about the prerequisites with this so again important information the interviews were would be virtual for the certificate course so the length of this program is 36 months again a good news so it would come to around three years then it is mostly a hospital based program again it will give you a platform to practice in the hospital okay so it uses the platforms of the adia pass as well as the match again very interesting fact which i had discussed in my previous videos as well is you guys can always take up these externships Right, if you're somebody who is there in the United States, you're on a temporary visa uh, or maybe you have chances of becoming a US green card holder or you're somebody who is a Canadian immigrant, new uh, Canadian PR or somebody who is from Mexico, you can always move to this medical center, apply for your externship. Externships do boost your CV. For example, if they have 10 applications and if you are somebody who has an externship in this center, one, you will be well acquainted with the professors and two, your CV would be much better as compared to others because you have that North American experience in your CV. I know it sounds very merry and uh, very easy. I know it's not. It's sometimes it's damn expensive if you're somebody who doesn't have any relatives there for somebody who cannot afford because the living expense is quite high it becomes difficult but again guys there's something which is known as line of credit now it will be more easier to understand for somebody or an immigrant who's from canada or from mexico government allows you certain line of credit which you can take while you're preparing for your exams if you're somebody who's an internationally trained dentist maybe from india or from pakistan and you move to canada uh, which is quite popular now these days so what you can do is you can ask for a line of credit and your finances would be you know uh, it would be provided by the government you can finance your education and by doing so you can prepare for your licensing in exams if at all you think about doing that which is quite tough and it takes a lot more years 
or if you want to pursue your dds in united states you can even do that or you can if you want to be a dental specialist you can come to us you can you know take help of that money get that experience of externship which can be just one to two weeks and it will actually help you and increase and boost your cv in three to four times more and then you can get into these courses as well okay so coming on to the description of this so it is something in the department of dentistry and anesthesia and uh, they actually have two residents each year which are quota accredited this is a residency program and uh, earlier on it used to be 24 month residency and now in 2004 it changed to the three year program and the dental anesthesiology residents will receive dietetics clinical training administration and deep anesthesia and other forms of pain anxiety control of ambulatory dental patients on several rotations right now coming on to the program prerequisites which are very important again you they will accept foreign students as you can see then you might require certain english tests it can be toefl it can be ielts i would advise you to give your toefl exam it's an ibt version which can be given at home it is very easier to give and it is even at comfort of your home then they require the inbde or the nbd part one and part two scores again it is mandatory for any specialty there are some specialties which are there which don't require it i will attach the link somewhere it will be flashing up in the description box you can have a look at it then you don't need an nbme so this nbme score is something which you know oral and maxillofacial surgery aspirants generally give now it is relatively easier for them to give who are already doing their dds because these exams are conducted by their own parent schools and sometimes you don't have to pay for these these schools so if they charge it is more or less around 150 to 300 dollars and you can appear for four times five times six times during your dds course if you are a regular student that is a four-year one or even if you're somebody who has joined as an international uh, graduate in the third year you can even prepare if you uh, at all aspire to become an oral surgeon in the united states so it is more or less relatively easier for those who are already pursuing it right so this score is not mandatory but in coming future it might become because all you have to deal is with uh, a person or a patient's health and uh, the department of sedation and anesthesia is totally dependent upon you right okay then coming on to another very important aspect here which we can see is the applicants who are uh, graduates from US or Canadian dental schools and graduates from non CODA schools must complete a program in the United States of the graduates of the foreign schools and uh, the citizens matching with the program if you're somebody who's a Canadian citizen or PR you can have a TN visa which you can get according to the NAFTA's rules you can read about it on the internet it's all available over there so you can do that it is acceptable the good thing here is the non residents are also acceptable here again important aspect for those which i want to discuss here is this part so this is if you're somebody who is already there in us uh, you can have a green card or you are already working as a dentist there or you were already working as a dental specialist or you had been working as a dental assistant or as a, somebody a dental administrator you might be having certain visa status which is mostly a j1 visa or a tn visa right so if your visa status is allows you to work then it's a plus point for you because they won't be sponsoring any of the h1b visa or any h4 visa you tend to get married somebody who has moved to us your husband is on h1b you on h4 i'm sorry guys you can't apply you have to change your visa status how you can do this you can get a job you can easily land yourself as a dental assistant and in some provinces there are exams for dental hygienists 
you can apply or you have to search those provinces or if you're some in a particular province you have to find out what are the rules and regulations of working as a dental assistant or dental hygienist by this you can acquire a certain visa status and if you're somebody who's already there uh, studying maybe if you're already on f1 for example you did your masters of public health and you're already there and you're looking for a job and you might and you landed yourself a job now you want to shift your careers and you want to pursue and come back into the dentistry you can always use that visa status they can extend that visa status which is a win-win situation for you in my previous videos too i have discussed this major factor of visa status because a lot more times this status of your of your you know being there in that particular country becomes so difficult you're not able to enter that country it might be because of the covid it might be because of uh, you are not able to provide the proper documentation and you don't land yourself a particular visa status then all of this will go into vain and uh, you guys need to work on that how you can do is you can get yourself a study visa you can enroll yourself into masters of public health i know it's a pricey thing but there's something which is known as line of credit you can always get that line of credit start studying you can always pay your uh, fee and tuition back in in a period of 2 years or 3 years and uh, that's all about it and you must see to it so before ending the today's video i would like to talk about a small quote here always have eyes that see the best the heart that forgives the worst and a mind that forgets bad and a soul that never loses hope so guys don't give up on your dreams keep working keep hustling keep working hard and also do follow me on my instagram as well as on youtube do comment down i will shortly be replying to your queries and uh, stay tuned with me with 